Welcome to Reverse Sweep's Power Rankings. Now that the major has come to a close, we're gonna reveal just in a minute how those have changed for Enable and Pac-Man. But let's look at the major first and how that broke down. Atlanta, a flawless stage one, undefeated, only dropping two maps to Dallas in the winner's final and the grand final. You had New York subliners upsetting Optic to eliminate them and take third. Optic settling on fourth and then the rest falling down. London and Seattle, unfortunately, still not able to get a foothold this season. Let's take a look now at how these rankings for Enable and Pac-Man have shifted. The biggest movers, Florida on the way up, plus four moving in to that sixth place slot. And unfortunately, the likes of Minnesota, Paris falling three spots toward the bottom of the league. The bottom and the top, however, stay in exactly the same. So let's see why they made the decisions they made. Now guys, we're gonna start with probably combining 11th and 12th because they haven't moved and they're still ass, but let's pull it up. How your, <laughs> how your rankings have changed or not. About, London Royal Ravens and Seattle Surge. 11, 12, yeah. the, the blow it up yeah, spot. Yeah, the <laughs> tray for picks is what I like to call it here in, that, in, in those bottom two spots. It's, I don't even, we don't really got nothing to say. I mean, London hasn't won a series. London, London hasn't won a series. Surge has beaten London. <laughs> like, that's rough. Uh, I don't even know if I believe in the Surge's ability to trade for picks because you they saw don't. How that went last yeah, year. we don't really know what they're doing when it comes to that. And they also have a bunch of pretty good players individually. They just don't work well together. Yeah. I, so I, I, don't, I don't really know what they would do. It's so but, it's so weird. Like London has options. Like they. They can go for Hydra from, mm -hmm. from New York, since he's not playing and New York's really good now. They could get Waskins. They could They could do yeah, they, they could, could they have options, moves. I they feel could, like it's, that would fit. It's because Seattle, no one wants to play for Seattle anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it, it's that's just how it is. You know, they're gonna have to pick up Proto and Pander again if they if they, they want to make they a move. They can't do that. They 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 can't. They, they won't. They, they won't. They can't do that. Imagine though. <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's it, it's weird because Seattle they have a lot of players when you look on paper you're like oh these guys i mean they they're all champions yeah. you know it's but it's just like not working and yeah. i don't know i don't know what it is it it could be a million different things but they're just not good right now in my opinion but they are better in london well yeah well, they, they, at least they are better than that. london they are better than london you're at the bottom of the barrel but not at the bottom so thank you're you you're squishing london, london into the bottom of the <laughs> for some sort of cushion but Minnesota, unimpressive in the major, and thus they fall three spots, taking 10th right after Seattle and London. So, Pac-Man, thoughts, Minnesota, moving on down. I mean, if you're going to be that bad at hardpoint, you have to be Atlanta phase levels of good in S&D. And although they're really good at S&D, they're not that good at S&D. Yeah. And you're just not going to make it losing every hardpoint you play. They're not a strong enough team for that, and they, have, they haven't figured it out. I'm, yeah. They... Could like we were talking about them uh, last episode, where it's they have a lot of potential, you know, and they could really make some noise and and climb the rankings. But they're just the they might be the worst hardpoint team in the game right now. Luckily, Surge and London are in the CDL because <laughs> it's hard to not be the worst team when you just can't win a hardpoint. You're automatically yeah. losing two maps in a series. So it's they and they look so they look good in S and D. Mm -hmm. They look solid in control. But like two maps, you're just you're, chalking you're up. Donating you donating Yeah, you might as well just not even play them at this point. We we did say I'd rather be good at S and D than hardpoint because of the yeah, because, 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 because of the reps. You at can't hardpoint. be dog shit. But you can't be hardpoint. yeah, but you can't be giving them all the way. When you're bad at a hardpoint, you should win one one of three. Like you should win some of them still when you're bad at it. At least be around forty percent. Yeah, like, yeah. they're like still bad. So, right? right. right. They're they're like, so but like, shoo! You get you're out there donating maps away to teams that. Who they lose to? They lost to Ultra. Ultra's a solid team, but you don't donate two hard points. You don't. No. To, I mean, you Ultra. can't afford to no. consistently when be giving it When you up. start to look towards the top, if you're donating to the Ultra, that means you're absolutely getting yeah. had yeah. bad by Optic and Subliners and all those yeah, teams. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're good at S&D, because if you go up against <laughs> Atlanta, they're 11 and 1 Yeah, you're not, you're not going to. I mean, yeah. and the thing is, though, is it's not even like they're losing these hard points close, you know, where it's like they're just choking. Like, they just can't clutch up. They're getting pretty much battered by every team in the league when it comes to the hard point. So it's it's weird to me that they could be that bad mm -hmm. in hard point. 
but they are. So <laughs> that's why I have them at 10th. That's why I think we, we just can't put them any higher. This is what you can't. Yeah. Even though I think they still. They have, they have a ceiling, though. They have a yes, way higher ceiling than just, a lot of This is power teams. rankings. This is where they are right now. Well, and they'll have some time, at least, before stage two to try and figure things out. A little bit of a break after the major. But another team falling three slots and hitting at nine, Paris Legion. We had higher hopes for them going into the major, but you guys moved them on down to nine. They just didn't, they didn't win a series. I mean, they they played Florida. They came on, they won the first map. And I'm like, okay, they are better. Like, we thought thought Mm -hmm. they're, they're stronger than everyone was saying to start. And they showed it to start. And then... Florida kind of dumped on them after that. I had, I personally had high hopes for Paris just because new team, none of them had really teamed before. We didn't know what their ceiling was. So I was expecting them to even make kind of a decent loser's bracket run, you yeah. know, mess up some brackets. And then, yeah, they were just out round one. <laughs> so, it, it's, tough, tough. it's one of those teams that I feel like is super streaky, mm-hmm. which isn't good if you want to be, you know, a top, a contender. And it's definitely not good for your power rankings because you could be ninth <laughs> one week and, you know, maybe fifth the next. Yeah. But they just, they're not as good. As, as, they don't have as much potential as other mid-pack teams. Yeah. I think that shows. That's, a, that's a good way to say it. Yeah, like, yeah. I feel like even when they're playing well, we thought they could be, like, you know, a top six-ish team. Yeah. And when it came to it, it just wasn't even close to that. It didn't, they didn't show enough when it counted. So they just got to be in our ninth spot. And Gorillas staying the same. You guys had them at eighth. Yes, a sweep over Thieves, but you didn't move them anywhere. You kept them at eight. They swept Thieves. But like I said, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. They swept Thieves. <laughs> but like, it's the Thieves. Their fundamentals are kind of whack. So LA Gorillas came out and they punished them. They did. They did good job. That's why they didn't fall. But then they went on to win one more map for the rest of the. So after sweeping Thieves, I'm like, oh. Part of me is like, they could be pretty decent. Even though I didn't think they'd win another series. Because, I mean, they did have a hard run. But, they had to go up against Atlanta. But, they but, right they, but it, wasn't, yeah. it wasn't really close. I feel like they had a one close-ish hard point against Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And then and that was a wrap. And then, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, they had no yeah, chance versus yeah, Atlanta. Okay. No, no, no. But no one did, to be fair. But it just, it, when you look at them, their ceiling. They have a lot small or a lot lower of a ceiling than I think a lot of the other teams in that mid-pack. Uh, and they did beat Thieves 3-0, but they still got the same placing at the end of the day as them in 5th, 6th. Mm-hmm. And it's just, they don't really have impact players. I think their team is going to be reliant on their teamwork uh, and, you know, just their overall knowledge of the game. But as you keep progressing throughout the year, teams are going to catch up. You know, right. you get to a certain point where every team basically knows about the same when it comes to how to mm-hmm. play the game. That's when it comes down to your talent you know, your your clutch ability. And I just don't think the gorillas really had, like, they're basically relying on App to, like, really to, take to over off, and, 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 and impact a and series. And that's always dangerous if you're relying on one player to consistently be the person who's going to get you to where you need to be. And in today's game, I think back in the past, when I was playing and stuff like that, you could you could do that. You could have a guy that was just better than other people. No, you got faced, though. Yeah. But like, now you have, like, a few teams with multiple people where it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just, that's asking a lot. Absolutely left and right, just like, <laughs> damn. And you got <laughs> and you got Sim on phase, just like, yeah. oh, okay, y'all. I'll do, like, <laughs> so it's just, I think they're kind of capped mm-hmm. at, at, at their potential compared to other teams. The first team to move up a couple spaces, that is Toronto Ultra, moving up two spaces to number seven. So what made you guys want to give them a little bit of a boost? For me, it just how they looked. You know, they they didn't do the best, especially they had a huge collapse versus these, where, <laughs> and they got bodied in a series 3-0. I feel like I saw glimpses of what they could be, you know, and it's still early in the season. I think compared to Gorillas, they have a higher ceiling, you know, and they didn't have the easiest bracket either you know it was it was tough yeah. because it was the first major and i think mm-hmm. this is really where we get a good understanding of how good all these teams are but I, I think they just showed more promise more competitive games and i like toronto so <laughs> <laughs> it just when you look at it top to bottom on the roster it just looks stronger than all the rosters beneath them yeah with maybe the exception of rocker but they not they're just not playing well I just look at their team and I think that they have a chance to keep moving up. Like if they beat 
all these teams above them, it wouldn't surprise me. Whereas it's starting to get to the point where, at least with the teams below them, I'm not, I'm not expecting them to win these matches. Toronto, though, they go into the series and I feel they could do it. Mm-hmm. I really do feel like they could do it. They did get bodied by the Thieves, but that's that's part of the LA Thieves' streakiness and their mm-hmm. fundamentals. Exactly. Like, okay, now we're playing well, and you're like, okay, this is why this team was top four or they whatever. They caught Thieves in a good series. Exactly. They caught them at the wrong you time. Know, unfortunate. If you would have played them first, like Gorillas, maybe you would have won. But they probably would have. Like, I'd... no cap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so. Now, the team with the biggest movement in the rankings, Florida Mutineers moving up four spots to be in our top six, taking sixth place. So Florida clearly enabled you guys were impressed enough with them and how they performed to, to bump them up that many spaces. For me, I think they have the potential to be a top team, a top four team in this game. So do I. I like when I look at them, the players, the talent they have, they can – kind of bridge the gap when mm-hmm. it comes to that. And they looked pretty poor. It was weird because mm-hmm. I was expecting more and they kind of had a slow start. But I think that now they're making a consistent improvement series after series. You see them getting more comfortable with each other. Awakening's been playing great. Mm-hmm. One of the best players in the game. I think Neptune is kind of, you know, finding his footing in COD. And I think he is going to be the key yeah. You know, he needs to kind of turn into that superstar player. He needs like to get a little better. Team. Yeah, he needs to get a little better, but <laughs> we'll give him some time. This yeah. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's played, what, five, six he, matches? He, de- he, deserve, yeah. he, he deserves the let's give, give him, him some, some time. Give him some time to get there. He deserves some let- let's give him some time. He does. But they just, they're more comfortable than they were. And mm-hmm. I think as time goes on, they're going to keep improving, and they're going to be able to compete with these powerhouse teams. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you look at some of the other teams that are below them, Gorillas, um, I mean, I'm not even going to go as far down to London. <laughs> you just know that, eh, where are they really stacking up? I think you make a good point about Neptune because their ARs, Skies and Awakening, they're top of the, yeah. top, they're top of the line, upper top echelon. Top AR duo. Top sure. AR duo. Skies did something crazy to Seattle where you started out 12-1. and one, Absolutely world star in them. <laughs> but if Neptune actually gets up there to the B, just like even anywhere, anywhere close to the top subs. Like, I, I'm, converse, not, I'm not expecting him to be better than those guys or whatever. Just be near it, be in the conversation, be, the conversation. be up there. They could be really good. They could be a really good team. I, uh, they lost 3-2 to two to New York, but New York's an upper echelon team. That's how they got yeah. knocked out of the tournament. They looked, Florida looked really competitive. They were up 2-0. They were, I'm pretty sure, right? They were up 2-0 in the series? Um, Against New York, were they? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the New York. Twice to say that yeah, it was competitive. Yeah, yeah. It it was, was, yeah they were up too well. Like yeah. they had, and you see how far New York made it. Mm-hmm. And I was surprised by that series. But <laughs> if they close that series out, who, who knows? They could have been in the same spot. Yeah, who knows? You know, so who knows? I, I feel like it's well deserved that we move them up the ranks. And they just, they have a lot of potential. Yeah. So let's talk now about four and five. I'm going to kind of lump them together because you switched places for them. We originally had Thieves. They're at fourth and, and subliners in fifth, but now you've reversed those subliners sitting in fourth, thieves in fifth. So, uh, so it's, why a, not it's a little bit unfair to group them, but I get what you're doing. They they split, they flip up spaces, but it's like five, and then it's like four, <laughs> four three. Well, it's not a we it's like it's like five, <laughs> four three, three four, you know what I mean? It, it, five <laughs> though. Five. I, I'll though. give you subliners. Five should be fourth. I don't think it's by a crazy amount. Five. Four, three. You know Is that I mean? all you're going to say? Are you going to give That's... better analysis on that? Five. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, ha- you, you do have to move subliners up. They got third at the first major. I think it was big. They 3-0'd the team that 3-1 Thieves and Optic. They seem to get it right now more than the Thieves. I... I... <laughs> <laughs> just they're, I have not tried. I don't they're wanna... more consistent. Yeah, they, yeah. they just are. So if LA Thieves and Subliners played, LA Thieves could beat them, and I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah. But if they played and Subliners 3 0'd them, I wouldn't be surprised at all. It's just the way it just all comes down to how LA decides to play that day, and that's also not good. You want to be a championship team, or Slasher has that, Michael Jordan thought process. You have to be consistent. Michael Jordan didn't go out there and get blown out. By the damn Nuggets, he lost a couple <laughs> times in the first round. That playoff. was before he had, but he that was before he had Scotty. Slasher has Kenny. You know what I mean? Okay, that's fair. 
I, they have a team. They sub, have a good, a really good roster. Subliners deserve to move ahead of these for sure right now. I, I think it showed in the major. They looked a lot better. I'm just not fully sold on the, you know, five, four. <laughs> I think I think it's a lot closer. I think for those two teams right now, like if they match up, it really depends on the day, on, on the series. Fair enough. I mean, I can't disagree with that. I just but, uh, but I will say I think it's clear cut that that is kind of where... The gap, like the fifth spot, is the gap. Those mm. top five teams, obviously, you can mm-hmm. tier them a little bit differently, but I think they're far ahead of the rest of the pack for right now. You'd have to agree with that. And speaking of the top three, uh, we'll start with Optic, but those did not change either. Phase in first, Dallas second, Optic third. So when you look at Optic, uh, my question for you guys on this ranking, how close are you going to put them to kind of that one two? How close are you putting oh. them? They're third, but how close are they to Dallas? Ah, they played Dallas in a really good series. It's a really close series. Round 11. Round 11. Game five. True. Amazing. But against the rest of the field, I would take Dallas versus the rest of the field way before I would take Optic versus the rest mm-hmm. of the field. Dallas is more consistent. It's hard to put Optic ahead of Dallas, especially after seeing the way they lost to New York, and then Dallas just dismantled New York right yeah. after that. I, like, I think when it comes down to the top three, the top echelon teams, it's matchups. Like you said, it. Optic and Dallas, very close series, very entertaining, probably the most entertaining of the whole oh, event. Oh, for sure, for sure. But against the field, I'm taking Dallas in phase 10 out of 10 times. Just because SND, even though they've improved, is a weak game mode for them right now. Do you still consider them the best hard point team? No, uh, I'll give them best control. I still think they're the best they're, control. They're team. the best control team, best hardpoint team. Is it? Is it phase? Is it? Is it Dallas? Well, it's I'm definitely not, not optic. If you want to just talk about the major, because they mm-hmm. lost two hard points to Dallas. Dallas. To Dallas, yeah. yeah so they, optic is a top respawn team. Obviously, they are. They're, they are. They're in the third yeah. spot, and I just think if you were to talk about optic versus phase, optic versus Dallas, yeah, they could be some close series where. Optic might win a couple times, but against the field, I'm taking both of those teams mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 times right now just because of how well-rounded they they both are. So I think there's a, eh, there's a you know, there's, there's a, there's a small... There's a gap. Because there's, yeah. there's, there's definitely an argument where some people could say that you could put subliners ahead of Optic. I wouldn't make that argument. Obviously, subliners 3 would them, but they also got 3 would Yeah. That's just one of those exactly. day-to-day things that Call of Duty is. But between Empire and Optic and Empire phase and Optic, like, it's... Those teams have earned those top two spots. They've solidified themselves there for now, at least. So then mm-hmm. Dallas, number two. Um, talk to me about... I mean, you can't really put them anywhere else, right? <laughs> like, they're not worse than Optic, but they're certainly not better than FaZe after what we just saw. I think there's a bigger gap here from two to one than there is from Optic kind of getting into that top two spot. I think as not any disrespect to Dallas. I just think FaZe is by far the best team. No, yeah. weak, no weaknesses. So... You like where do you capitalize against them? You can't you can't say Dallas is better than them, obviously, since they just got <laughs> bodied by them. But it's not that close, in my opinion. It's not. That's actually scary to say because I do think that Dallas is that much better than everyone else. Yeah. And Phase and is that much better. Than, I mean, they started out up six zero maps. Oh yeah, then you against have Atlanta, the second best team in the game. Yeah, at against, one like, who go eight and two against Dallas, and it's. And it was like, I, those two maps that Dallas won, they, they beat, won them. They beat their yeah. ass. Like, they, they did. Them. But oh, the eight other maps? <laughs> <laughs> well, those S&Ds, I mean, those S&Ds, it wasn't even like Dallas had a glimmer of a hope. And you have people like Illy who are really good at search mm-hmm. and completely neutralized against Atlanta. They're just, I, I personally think when it comes to matchups, like I said, phase matchup really well versus Dallas. Mm-hmm. Because you look on the side of Dallas, they have the SND stars, right? Illy Shotzi. You know, you can even throw Kyler in there, mm-hmm. maybe not correct. He dropped 14 against somebody. Kyler looked Game great. <laughs> Phase stacks up against that, right? Where if maybe you look at Optic, those players on Dallas can take over, right? And, and same thing on Phase. Phase is just too dominant right now. They're too much. Like across the board it, dominance. Like who is Phase's worst player? Selian? Or that's ridiculous. Is it Arsenis? <laughs> that's ridiculous. Definitely, like, definitely your, not your worst player is still one of the best players. Yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. It's just so it's 
I just think it's going to be tough for Dallas to move up the power rankings, at least for the time being, unless FaZe start falling to other teams. Because I think at the end of the day, FaZe isn't going to fall off the face of the earth, Maybe right? Maybe if they get no, complacent, people can steal they, a series I, or I two. I can't even but, see that happening. When's yeah. the last time that those that the Tiny Terror duo has even had a bad like uh, a yeah. bad That's couple fair. days? Like, bad, like, I can't remember. But I, I think it would have to come down in a major where FaZe loses to another team. Yeah. I'd be okay. more confident in another team beating them yeah like maybe optic being able to just clutch up and win all three respawn or whatever the case may be who plays them well florida randomly plays them really well yeah. well i think i think yeah. some of the lesser teams play them well because mm-hmm. maybe it's a yeah, they, game game. They, don't give, they don't give them as yeah. much respect yeah. or you know they just don't know those teams play styles study whatever. them yeah. as much yeah. they're not as worried about it losing the paris as they are in dallas of, so they might take them more seriously and studying it could be a bunch of yeah. other factors but well, i just the studying, something that you just mentioned, when I talked to Crowder after the major, he told me that that was the most well-prepared the team had ever been. It showed. Ever been in a match they went into. And yeah, you ate to them through the winner's final into the grand finals. So It was almost as good as uh, the 8-1 phase versus Optic and AW when I was on the team, you know, most dominant. There was no studying in that game. <laughs> there was a lot. but There was no studying in that game. You just dashed around and shot people. It, <laughs> but he did God. it really well. I did it fantastic. No, he did. He was good at that one. Well, gotta, I, gotta give respect, though. <laughs> let me guess myself. To, to FaZe and Dallas. No, Clear for cut, sure, for top sure. two teams in the game. And I don't know if it'll change soon. I think mm-hmm. they might stay the top two for at least the foreseeable future. We talk enough crap about like some of the teams. It feels bad when it kind of feels like we're talking a little crap about Dallas. When we're not, right? Like We're just praising how, we're just, how, how good FaZe is really and how dominant good. they were. And then there's Atlanta that's just yeah. almost perfect. Right. right. They're the final boss, right? I mean, yeah. they're they're on a revenge tour. Dallas beat them last year. Oh, you know how you know what happy I'm saying? they, 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 they want to be the best yeah. team it, all year long. It was sadly predictable, too, when they picked up Alec. Like, damn. Yeah. Of course. Let this happen. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Are there salary caps? <laughs> but there uh. you go. Atlanta and Love Dallas. Like, <laughs> <laughs> rounding out our top two. The biggest movers. Minnesota, unfortunately, on the way down. Florida on the way up, moving up four spots to number six. So some shuffling in the middle there, but at the very bottom and at the very top, no movement to be found. We'll see how that changes going into stage two. But as for right now, congratulations to Atlanta, the top spot, Dallas and Optic right behind him, and London and Seattle, I wish you good luck.